one of the cool things about Revisto, we are talking about the fact that Revisto puts a lot of power into the hands of your field, your foreman, your project managers, and takes a lot of the burden off of your VDC team and lets them focus on VDC. Um, so something I want to point out here, um, just because I'm on a pretty powerful computer and this is a pretty big model, you can see I, I can handle this still pretty well with my computer. Now, an iPad, you might start slowing down. Definitely some older iPads, you might start slowing down. So Revisto recognizes this and Revisto lets us actually pick what I want to see. So I could come in here and I could turn off, I'm gonna turn off everything but duct. So right there's my duct model. I could turn off everything but that. And there you can see I've got just my duct model loaded in. Um, some of the favorite workflows of this. So number one, I'm, I'm gonna show a very simple workflow that we do in Revisto, and that's making a stamp where we can automate all of the issue creation. I can have this automatically show up with people as watchers. I can automatically have stuff be assigned to the right person. I can give it critical priority, all that good stuff. But because I'm a complete uh, <laughs> Revisto, Revisto believer and nerd, I actually did my list for this in here. So one of the first things that I think is super important is being able to, like I just showed, be able to isolate something to where now I'm just digging into what we do. I just isolated down to just our contract. You know, I took out the, the architectural, all the stuff that I might not need to see, like I could turn that back on over here. Um, and then if I unisolate down here, the, the building comes back on. But what's cool about making issues is that, um, like Mark pointed out in our last session, we can actually guide our field team in this. So instead of me teaching the field team what I'm teaching right now, we can make an issue for them, say, hey, go click on that isolate and apply system property issue. You can or apply system colors. They can just click that little button and boom, it's going to do it for them. And now they're in there, you know. And now they can either, whatever they feel more comfortable doing, they can open this chat, they can add chat here. Um, if I assign Mark, which by the way, Mark, I jumped into the uh, MEP demo project. Um, but you can see, I can start adding chat. I can assign Mark to this stuff. Yep. Um, and what's interesting when you start isolating your own work is you just start doing really simple visual stuff like this. Like I obviously just found a problem. I obviously just found another problem, you know, right there. We got an air terminal that needs a tap. And for some reason it's on the top when it should be on the bottom. You know, we just start finding all this stuff. And what's neat is that you can take that tag that I made. Like this is a real common one that I would do. I'd make like fake transitions that we can't use just because the software told me I could. That's definitely a Revit transition. Revit thinks that's okay. Um, but now we can take a stamp and we can just apply that stamp to it. So I could take, um, I could take, oops, I can click my little stamp button. I can click my MEP workflows and I can start stamping whatever I see. So there's that problem that I saw earlier. There's another problem. I could just come in here and again, grab my stamp mode, MEP workflows, and I can just start clicking on different stuff that I find wrong with my model. See how easy this becomes to review what's actually in 3D. Now, what's important about this is like, we're actually putting this model in the hands of the field. So sometimes we have to make that decision and we can't wait for, for someone to tell us what needs to be done. You know, so that's where I might come in here and I might put my stamp and I might say, um, I'm gonna delete that and say, hey, we missed a tap. Um, and I can circle that. I can add all my good markups. I can add a, a picture to this if I want. And then I say done. And then now we've actually got a running log of this. And as the PM, I can come up here and say, PM, um, I am having this fabricated. Please update in as built. Something that simple. Now your field can make changes to the fabrication model 
and we can communicate around that rather than blindsiding the VDC team, making us have to do a bunch of as builds or the worst possible thing here is the, the VDC team not learning what they did wrong. Um, so that's where one of my biggest things that I like to do as I learned to actually draw duct work, I would use Revisto to have this conversation with my sheet metal guys. And then I would come in here and if I learned something that I needed to share with my team, I would add a, a tag to this that I could filter by on the back end. So I can come up here and reset those filters and I can actually just go over here, go by tag and say, I wanna see all the lessons learned. Well, on this job, we have 221 mistakes we made and now I've got every one of them documented Ideally with pictures, you know, here I can see where I went wrong on this ISO. You know, sometimes I had foremen actually add a, a screenshot or a, a picture of real life of, hey, this is why you can't do what you were trying to do. This is the what the real fitting in real life looks like. And we can actually have these markers and be able to communicate around this with actionable um, progress tracking. So I'm gonna reset this back to my MEP stamp. And again, I, I'm definitely flying through this stuff. So if anybody has any questions, um, concerns, comments, feel free to reach out afterwards. Um, and we'll go over this much more in depth. Um, but the next, the next workflow here that I really wanna dive into is um, communicating dimensions also with your field. So by putting this model in the, in the field's hands, instead of them saying, hey, I don't know how far this is from that other duct or something like that, with Revista, we can actually click our, our ruler and then I can do something like this minimum dimension and I can click the duct I'm trying to get a, a dimension from and click the other duct. And this is gonna tell me my, the minimum distance between the two. And if this is skewed, it's gonna tell you across the bottom. So if I wanna go, like from that elbow to this elbow, you can see that skewed and I get a direct line measurement here, but I also get the, the difference in X and Z or X and Y in this case. It doesn't, yeah, it's pretty flat right there. So um, if I jump out of that, um, of course with that, um, something I didn't mention, I can actually come in here and if they say, if they say something that's really, really useful. Like, hey, I can't get my hand in to make this connection or something like that. We can click this little create issue button. And then I'm gonna put QAQC on this one and say, uh, check dimension. And again, keep in mind, this is not the VDC team doing this. This is a, a, a field foreman or a, a PM or somebody else that wants to communicate a dimension to us. I just saved this off and now I can click 3D and I can jump right into that spot where that foreman, whoever is trying to pull that dimension. So I can see what they're trying to communicate all around the model. So if I jump back over the issue tracker, um, something I keep touching on here is site images. And Mark, I don't know if you wanna, throw one up here so you guys can see how this works live, but I can actually sure. assign something over to Mark. And so right now what he just got is he'll get a little green bubble up here that tells him he's got something new in his name. And then it's gonna show up up here with a little one next to his name or next to the issue that's gonna tell him that there's something new on that item. So up here, you can see this one I made earlier, Mark already attached. This is a really powerful thing too that people like to do. He attached a, a document. I don't know if you- With a, a previous report. Sorry, what's that? I don't know if you locked up or if I locked up. There was a good uh, 15 minute, 15 second pause there. Uh, uh, it's okay. We're now. rolling. Good old technology. Mm -hmm. um, but to recap what I opened right there, this, so Mark attached the document to this other issue. He let me know he's gonna be working on this and he attached the document. So this could be any kind of document. This could be a submittal. This could be a PNID. 
Um, I know we're talking about duct work, but there's all kinds of schematic diagrams that are useful. <laughs> Napkin sketches are useful a lot of times, honestly. I would have a, a foreman. They, we were a subcontractor who subcontracted a, a duct some subcontractor. He would sketch stuff on a napkin and send it to me this way. And then I would implement it into the model and we'd be able to track it. I'd be able to come back here and say, you know, did you see it yet? You know, to where he could see that, hey, I got what you were trying to tell me and I got it into the model. And now the foreman could circle black, circle back and click 3D and be able to look at exactly what he was trying to implement into our project. Um, and up here, you can see that site images one. Uh, Mark, I see you attached that same thing. Um, yeah. What I want to point out is that with the iPad, you can click this down here and then you can click photo. And this is going to go bonkers because we're in Zoom right now. But I can click photo and this is going to activate my camera on the iPad and they can just snap a picture real quick of what they see in real life. So we can make these issues, we can communicate around all of this, um, and then we can actually add pictures, um, which you guys can imagine it enables the field to make changes that they need to make right now. And it also lets the VDC team learn. It lets us understand this is why that guy was so mad at me, <laughs> you know? Um, Look at that, you're in stereo. There you go. Yep, <laughs> how funny is that? <laughs> So there, Mark just activated his camera yeah. on an issue that I made at the start of this meeting and, and snapped a picture for me to, to see what he's talking about. And he'd be able to mark this up or um, any of that good stuff, too, if he wanted. And with the cool 360 photos coming out now, hey. you can make any... Uh, you can make That's any, like your new screen. <laughs> you can make any... 4K screen. What's that? Like your new 4K screen. Oh, yeah. Yep. But you can actually, um, you can attach a Theta photo. So I, I would walk the site, take photos with my Theta and put those right in as a 360 photo. Or like I just did there, you have the option to click the button and you can make any regular photo 360 if you want to, for some reason, if you want to get sick. <laughs> um, something else that I want to point out, if I come back here down to the bottom, um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I just talked about this in the last session, but equipment takeoffs. So here you can see with my appearance profiler, which by the way, this is what's coloring everything. So hopefully everybody can, can see that. Um, I could always like turn this off and see how my stuff goes back to normal. My models turned on. Uh, it's so hard to navigate. Well, now I can go back over to that issue tracker click click one of these issues and whatever it was uh, created in, you gotta click 3D over here on the side, whatever it was created in is gonna be saved. So I just wanted to point that out real quick, but let's say I wanna get a takeoff, a material takeoff or an equipment takeoff. I can actually click a VAV like this. I can right click right here. Let's say I wanna find all the DESV, RH, uh, VA, Titus VAVs. I just right click, find the same property there I've got 772 of them selected. Down here at the bottom, I can isolate those in transparency. I can completely isolate them. But the coolest part about this, if anybody was in my last session, you know you can click the selection inspector and now I can see any information to do with that. So I can see the system. I can see if they're two row or single row. Um, I can see the, the type number and mark and all of that good stuff. And then I can also sort by this. So if I want to say, see just the supply, which they probably are all supply air VAVs, maybe not. Oh, they don't have a system assigned to them. But you can see how you can start getting down. See this have a, a syst, it's on all systems. Good old uh, Revit parameters. They just combine anything that uh, linked into it. That's why another reason why I love ITMs. ITMs let you specify a system. But once you select all these guys here, let's do this with let's do this with a piece of duct. Let's say, and you see I've got an undo button down here. People love that workflow also. <laughs> um, but I could grab a duct right here, and let's say I want to grab all the round duct. I find same properties, isolate that, and you can see there I just grabbed all the round duct. I hit that button here. 
And then I could go, I could start going specifically. I can go to just the exhaust round duct. And just like that, I made an isometric of my exhaust system and all the round duct. And again, if you watch that last class, you know you can export this to a CSV and this is all your cut links. This is all your elevations, your sizes, all that good stuff is right in here. Your, your taps, um, there's your links. We've got some, we got somebody using the duct stretcher here, making 86 footers. Um, <laughs> but again, this is a good way for you to back check that. Let's say our truck can only handle 20 footers or in reality, we can, they only make 20 footers, you know, but I can say anything that's over 20 foot and say, okay. And just like that, using Revisto, again, not the VDC guy. I'm the field guy. I'm the fabrication guy, whatever, you know, I just check the box that, hey, we won't have anything over 20 foot. I just got all of them. And now I can click this little button and select all of them. And I can either make a single issue out of this to where I could say, you know, I QAQC this. And there I just, I threw a stamp on that real quick. And I can say, um, we can't deliver anything more than 20 feet. I think the issue there is uh, with that model is they had just gotten a new duct stretcher and we're excited to use it on this project. <laughs> Yep. It probably saves a lot of tonnage if you can stretch out the, the 26 gauge into a 12. Yeah, it just moves air. It doesn't need to be a specific eh. thickness or anything. Plus, you can just, you could buy it thicker and then just, but it. Yeah, stretch it out. That's what I mean. It thins it out. Yeah. <laughs> We're obviously being sarcastic, but this is a very common thing that happens because we rely on software to do all of this work for us. Um, and a lot of this stuff gets missed. Simple, um, simple, like delivery stuff. Like as the VDC person, you're thinking about a lot more than can this fit on a truck, you know, whereas with here, we can think about does this fit on a truck? Um, and that said, this is one of the last workflows I want to use. And this obviously is Revit duct. It hasn't been taken through fabrication yet. So if anybody has some fabrication duct, like data that they want to send me um, to test around with, by all means, send it to me. But for this one, I'm going to share how we did this with piping. And you can see I can come in here and I can quickly just go over to all my piping stuff so that my iPad or whatever stays nice and smooth. And just like that, now I'm just in my piping model and I would apply spool colors. So all you got to do is apply spool colors and now we can start looking at where these connections get made. So just like with if this was round duct, square duct, where these colors change is where I'm going to have to make a weld or make a duct mate connection or something like that. And now we can actually start communicating around stuff like we were talking about. Is it going to fit on a truck? Because as the VDC person, it's not even on my mind, frankly. I, there's, there's plenty of VDC people out there that plan that way. But a lot of people are just thankful to learn, you know, what a street elbow is. <laughs> uh, but you can see here, this is a really easy way to do that. And then if I want to get back to those system colors, we use appearance templates in Revisto to do that. And here, let's let's turn off this this tower so it doesn't get in the way. You can see I can completely turn that off. And then now I can go system colors. I can go to school colors. And then going back to my last class, if anybody was in there, I can also apply custom Revisto property colors. So if I'm marking something as taken off or if I'm marking something as fabricated or installed, I can run this and it's just a simple appearance profiler that says if it's installed, turn it green. Um, so with that, that is a super duper fast uh, rundown on some of the most common duct work workflows I see with Revisto um, and getting getting our field in the models. I think that's the biggest thing Revisto does. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to shoot them to me here or anytime during the conference, feel free to reach out to Mark or I and be glad to answer questions and fill in the dots.